How to play spoons by me, Grant Sharkey. Hi. Uh, so uh, the first thing you do when you're trying to play spoons to people um, is to mention the cool place you're in. So if you're in a music venue, make sure you tell, you know, ask people to give the, the music venue a big round of applause um, because they're the most important places in all of human history and our future. Um, uh, the reason why you do that is because Weatherspoons itself doesn't have any music and it doesn't have a PRS license. So um, essentially, if you like music and you like live music, these places that have music are, are the last hope of it. Um, uh, to play the actual song itself, you need a bass uh, and you need it's all rooted around this this E here on the seventh fret. And uh, you play it's, it's just it's literally it's like four notes, the whole song. Um, uh, the main refrain starts with a, a double pinch, it's the E with the octave down, and a little third up, uh, so it's, uh, and the, it's over a bar it goes, that's pretty much it. Um, you throw in a bit of stuff, you, you, uh, there's an open A in there if you want to. Get the percussion working with your thumb as well. Um, all the way through the first verse, the, the bridge, the second verse, um, and the third verse, and all the way through the outro, that's all you have to play. It's quite nice. Um, uh, the only thing that's different in the whole song is the, the middle eight, which is this sort of... It's where you, you hold down a, an E, and uh, you play an, a, an A flat, and then an A. And that goes for three times. And then, uh, and then on the fourth time, you play with it with a B as well. And it goes. And it's back in. And then you're ready for the third verse. The structure of the song is uh, intro, one verse, a uh, bridge, and then a second verse. And then that little middle eight bit and then it goes into the third verse uh, and then it's just an outro after that um, it, it's the simplest song in the world um, uh, it's, it's the theory is that the simpler a song is the more you repeat something uh, the more people go in people's heads so if you kept saying something like I don't know um, 350 million pounds uh, that we'd say from the EU every week would go to the um, go to the NHS or something like that if you just kept saying something like that it would just go into people's heads and, and, and that way it would become catchy. Um, so that was the whole sort of idea for it. Uh, right, for the lyrics for the first verse, it's... Um, You'll never hear this song in spoons, which is a fact. And you won't ever see me play in spoons. If you don't like it, you can fuck off to a weather spoons. This is the joiners in Southampton, for instance, whatever venue you're playing. And thank fuck it's not a weather spoons. This place is where the people are cool. In culture and not true. Um, so that's the, the first verse in the bridge. Um, the whole point of the first verse, when you're performing it, remember, you know, you'll never hear this song in Where the Spoons. Obviously, that's a great first line to sing to people. So once you start doing that, people go, Oh, that's true. I wouldn't, I haven't heard that song in the Weather Spoons. That's because they don't have a PRS license. You don't hear any music in the Weather Spoons. Um, and you won't ever see me playing where the spoons that's because where the spoons doesn't put on live music um so that both of those two are facts if you don't like it you can fuck off to a where the spoons that's because in music we should not necessarily tolerate um uh, criticism from the audience no no that's not that it's uh, if, if you don't like the song obviously you can go to somewhere else that's basically what it is but obviously where the spoons is what we're talking about so that's why we talk about it um, and then obviously saying, but this is the, you know, this is the, the asylum in Chelmsford or something like that. The place you're in at the time, 
you get a big cheer from the audience it brings that whole group together you realize that live music is a really important community activity um uh, so that first verse is there this place is where the people are cool in the bridge that bit's there to essentially sort of um it's it's licking the asses of the audience completely um uh, obviously it's fun especially if they're not cool people sometimes it happens at mike shows there's not cool people turn up um this place is where the people are cool in culture and not true again i can't guarantee that they're not covered in drool i'm not even concerned whether they're knee deep in culture but let's face it if we're going to start attacking weatherspoons for not being a place of live music you know we may as well just keep going and just sort of self-affirm how great we are for just being in a place with 25 people on a tuesday night um uh so so it's, it's all self-affirmation stuff now the second verse gets a little bit tricky because I, I i wrote it in a, a i wrote it in a place where i didn't really know that much about weatherspoons but hey you know, we live in a post-truth sort of world. So the, the lines are, um, uh, what's the second verse? It goes, uh, uh, I know the beer is cheaper in a weather spoons. Which is true of most venues um, because they bulk buy. And I, I'm, you know, I, I'm just assuming that they just use money as a way of driving the prices down. It's just free market capitalism. Uh, and then the second line of the second verse is, and I know you can watch the football in a weather spoons. Now I'd only written this song, I've only been into one weather spoons, and that was in Cardiff, and I was hungry and I went into the one next to the moon in Womanby Street um, to have uh, some fish and chips or something like that because we were all hungry. Uh, it was with the uh, Vienna Ditto and um, uh, we basically I was just in there and on the TV I saw footballers. Now I've heard since then that you can't watch football in a weather spoon so I'm assuming that it must have been on a news show maybe a sports section of that so I wrote that out of complete ignorance that line um, uh, I change it sometimes to sort of like I know you can eat four or five or in a weather spoons which is a fact but it's not that funny um, I did one where it's I know you can probably get fingered in a weather spoons which I, I, I you know that's sort of depending on the audience really um, but uh, you can catch a disease in a weather spoons or something like that. I don't know. You don't need facts um, to when you're campaigning against something, essentially. So so um, so I, whatever whatever I feel like on the night, I, I tend to change the line, or I talk about the fact that you know I, I saw a footballer on a television in the weather spoons the one time I went in there once, and base my whole uh, reason to write that line on that. Just one of those things. Um, but did you know your soul can't grow in a weather spoons? That's a fact. You're just a wallet with low expectations once you step into a weather spoons. That's the end of the second verse. I mean, that sort of all makes sense, you know. Um, uh, the low expectation thing it's essentially you know no one really goes into a weather spoons for a connoisseur sort of beer moment do they um, it's cheap it's booze it's a drug it's just one of those things um, so if we just see them as cheap drug dealers that's what it is um, then it goes into that middle eight which is um, again a sort of self-affirmation uh, but also bringing in sort of a bit more of the political stance of it as well um, it goes to the Thank you for coming here to this commune To think and dance and share and sing some tunes But if you want to be treated like a right-wing goo You can always go to Weatherspoons You can always go to Weatherspoons Now if you always make that transition quite sweet as well So it's um... Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming here to this commune. Um, but if you want to be treated like a right wing goon, says, mm, mm, you can always go to Weatherspoons. You can always go to Weatherspoons. You don't have to be a slave to the rhythm, you don't have to be a slave to the tempo just there. You can really sort of drag that out and make it quite sweet. You know, because if you want to be treated like a right-wing goon, you can always go to Weatherspoons. I mean, it's 
essentially, if you think about the, the way the Nazis have been going at the moment, they're quite delicate people. So have, knowing that they've got somewhere to go, that's great. That's pretty good. Um, right into the third verse. It's a bit of a, a horrible verse, this one. It's hard to pull off sometimes, especially if the audience is a little bit older and stuff like that, um, because they don't know what UV lights are. But it's um, uh, but it was essentially, it's, it's, uh, it's just straight back into the thing. You can always go to where the spoons. You can always go to where the spoons. If you shine a UV light around a weather spoons, you will find hidden pictures of Margaret Thatcher all around the room. Around each picture is a little puddle of Tim Martin's goo. For those of you that don't know, Tim Martin is the boss of Weather Spoons. And he hates you. You gotta kinda of wish whisper a little bit, and he hates you, and then get back into it. And you can sort of ad lib the outro a bit. You know, you can just talk over it, talk about how Tim Martin hates everyone. Um, it's just to drag out the laugh, or you can just get into the groove and then end it. Um, uh, it's one of those songs where, you know, sort of the last verse is kind of hard. It's a hard work. Um, but not many people know who Tim Martin is. Um, Tim Martin's the boss of Weatherspoons. I only found out about Tim Martin when um, Michael Gove and Boris Johnson were going around in their bus. And they were talking in Weatherspoons um, about the Leave campaign. And, and essentially, I found out that Tim Martin put so much money into campaigning for Brexit. Um, and I thought that would be, that's a kind of interesting thing. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just writing songs and selling them. Um, uh, you know, as part of my business to sort of campaign against Weatherspoons. Um, but the the idea was basically, I thought it's such a clever move. I mean, essentially, Weatherspoons is a church. If you see, you know, if you think about the way the Alcoholics Anonymous or, you know, all those sorts of guys, the 12 step programs, the way they sort of, uh, they wait until people are quite vulnerable um, and, uh, and desperate uh, and then sort of help them, but also give them what they're selling in return. So like Jesus or whatever, you know, that that, that sort of, that sort of thing. Uh, it's quite a clever way of sort of building your your religion or your your fan base for an ideology, and um, and I thought Weatherspoons is really clever here because they were campaigning on an ideological and emotional um, uh, stance in terms of the EU referendum, whilst also uh, giving cut price drugs to addicts, uh, which I thought was absolutely brilliant because instead of helping anyone, they were just literally selling them the message and keeping them down at the same time. And I thought that was really lovely. That's 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 clever business. That's really good business. That's why the guys worth so much money. Um, uh, so so it's it, for me. It's, it was one of those things where I just I I suddenly got this huge respect for for Tim Martin and everything that the Weatherspoons team do um, to you know to make sure that people that are alcoholics uh, can get alcohol uh, really cheaply. So they're not breaking the bank. Hopefully not causing too much poverty there but also uh, selling them ideological things that are based on emotion um, and and possibly the, the sense that the places where people are at that time might be a place of despair or a place of no hope. And um, and I thought that was that was really good. So, so I thought I'd write the song to celebrate that quite a lot. Right, so to recap, uh, we'll just do the, the entire song and then we'll get out of here. Thanks very much for listening. My name's Grant. Um, I'll probably be playing in a town near you. I'm obviously not on a Weatherspoon, so... So please find your local music venue and uh, hopefully see you soon. You'll never hear this song in weather spoons And you won't ever see me play in weather spoons if you don't like it, you can fuck off to a weather spoon. This is the the Rising Sun Art Centre in Reading, and thank fuck it's not a weather spoon. This place is where the people are cool. Deep 
Keeping culture and our truth. I know the beer is cheaper in a weather spoons. And I know you can talk some bollocks in a weather spoons. But did you know? Just a wallet with low expectations once you step into a weather spoons. Thank you for coming here to this commune to think and dance and share and sing some tunes. But if you want to be treated like a right wing goon, you can always go to weather spoons. You can always go to weather spoons. If you shine a UV light around a weather spoons, you will find hidden pictures of Margaret Thatcher all around the room. Around each picture. Puddle of Tim Martin's goo. For those of you that don't know, Tim Martin is the boss of Weather Spoons. And he hates you. Yep. It just seems pretty obvious to me that he doesn't like poor people, except obviously for their money. And ideologically, obviously, he just thinks they're all stupid anyway, so fine.